It's my genuine pleasure to introduce Dr. Sharon Sproul. A remarkable, a remarkable person who is this afternoon's keynote speaker. Since I don't have the time required to read her impressive resume, I'll summarize by saying that she's a national authority on telecommunications and media policy, respected throughout the United States and overseas. Dr. Strover is the founder of the Telecommunications and Information Public Institute and current chair of the University of Texas Radio, Television, and Film Department, jobs which enable her to train skilled media professionals and, and indulge her in deep love for college committee meetings. <laughs> I, 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 first met, I first met Sharon at the Telecommunications Policy Research Conference, and Gene has got a hat from the CPRC, which, uh, which he will wave about here. Uh, 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 where, where she's a leading voice of reason in federal telecom policy. Since then, we've worked together at the Benton Foundation, where she has uh, generously contributed her time and skill uh, in a paper that she wrote for our universal service, um, our future universal service project in the state called Universal Service and Rural America. So let me introduce Sharon, uh, a gifted academic who understands not only how community policy, uh, policies are made, more importantly, how powerful these policies affect everyone of the lives. Karen? So, yeah. I, I really appreciate your giving me the chance to offer a few remarks on what we've done today and on what we might do tomorrow and, and in the future, in the near term at least. And I'm really pleased to be here because the organizations you represent, <coughs> the organizations that you're affiliated with, uh, reach back to my own start in media when I was an undergraduate at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, I worked on a, an Austin Access production group. I worked with a group, and uh, it was a group of women, and we were doing short documentaries that aired on the Austin Access station at that time. And uh, after that, I worked sporadically to help launch some of my independent filmmaker friends' films in different cities, especially when I lived in San Francisco, that being a kind of major media market. And, and along the way, I also started studying and reading about new, what were considered new communications technologies, a horizon that continually reaches out, of course. And at, at the time I started doing this, communication satellites were new. And I remember vividly reading about some of the experiments of communication satellites in Alaska and in India and the ways in which these satellites were being used to deliver education, to start educational systems, or to promote health systems in areas that didn't have access to these services at all. Places that just didn't have the richness in media systems that we've become accustomed to in the United States. And that really is what kind of launched me on an academic career at the time. And, and it's been really a pleasure to be associated with this institution for 20 plus years now. And, and I'm really happy to say that the faculty and art department in radio, TV, film actually has the phrase social justice in its mission statement. And I, I, it's pretty unusual in an academic environment, but we have a unique group of faculty that's very committed to recognizing and to encouraging media to be used for issues of social justice and for the, for the social causes all around the world. Um, I call media really the object of 21st century literacy. If the 20th century was an, an era that was that used and thought about literacy in the more conventional reading context, surely the 21st century will be one in which we think of literacy as, as applied to all forms of oral and visual media. And we can't begin to know what these media are going to be during this coming century. But suffice it to say, they're going to be different than what they are right now. But what I think they'll share with the media that we're all used to right now is in how important they will be for our social and our cultural and our economic landscapes. Uh, in my breakout group this morning, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned this business about our mission statement in our department 
referring to, to social justice. And I think that kind of surprised people a little bit, but it didn't keep somebody from, from remarking a little later on in response to a question about how to use prof professors in making media, that you had to be careful because they got a little long-winded. <laughs> so I'll try to be cognizant of that, and not be, not be too long-winded. In, in offering a few comments on what this summit means in a national context. Uh, but I am going to warn you, I'll do, I, I'm going to use a few words that have become really important to me in my work. And maybe there'll maybe they'll be words that, that offer, offer you a different, a different glimpse of, of things. So why are we here? First of all, this meeting is really different from a lot of meetings that I usually speak at, insofar as you all know right from the outset that the media are incredibly important. And they're important <coughs> in ways that go well beyond the economic. The media are change agents. They affect people. They arouse us emotionally and motivate us to do certain things, to vote, to respond, to scream, to think. And unlike a lot of the economically or, or oriented conferences or the regulatory oriented conferences I go to, where people our, our, the point of departure is that these are large industries, and because they make a lot of money, they're important. I think everybody in this room shares an understanding that it goes way beyond, way beyond that. Particularly in an environment as media-saturated as ours is. I heard an amazing statistic the other day on the number of ads, for example, that were, that were exposed to on a daily basis. It's, it's in the thousands on a daily basis. On a, on a happier note, we have things like blogs, and as was mentioned earlier, this whole meeting has been, has been blocked. And you can go to the texascommunitymedia.org site to look at the blog content, and that's pretty significant, even though we have to bear with those ads in, in other domains. But when we hear, we hear people talking about things like the global information infrastructure, which is a phrase I encounter all the time, that's really everything that you're doing here global media infrastructure. It's local, but you know, it's also global. Imagine that somebody in Russia, that somebody in Hong Kong, somebody in Beijing can actually watch this conference. That's pretty astounding when you think about it. And they might get some ideas from the challenges that we're facing, from the solutions that people are suggesting here. That is extraordinary when you think about it.